Hello and welcome to the big picture. The conviction of former Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Jayalalitha and the subsequent rejection of bail by the Karnataka High Court yesterday has thrown up some unprecedented situations. While law and order in Tamil Nadu has become a matter of severe concern, the protests in favour of the convicted Chief Minister has assumed serious proportions. With lawyers, film industry, even schools and school children in Tamil Nadu brought in in her support, it's virtually challenging the justice system. Meanwhile, reports of many people having, been ki having killed themselves protesting against her conviction and not getting bail are all adding to the illegal pressures being brought on even on the judiciary. Most worrying is the Karnataka establishments and buses among others being attacked by party carders in Tamil Nadu. Demands are now starting to build up on the centre to take note of all this and to act. There are also demands of shifting Jalalita from the Bangalore prison to somewhere in Tamil Nadu. We will discuss all these pressure tactics being employed and what are the consequences of it on the system as well as the future of the ADMK government. To discuss this, I have with me Ved Marwa, former governor and also a distinguished police officer, Mohan Katharki, Supreme Court advocate. Others will be joining us soon. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Mr. Marwa, do you think that the situation is leading towards some kind of a very serious situation where the centre will have to have a, take a look at it? Well, if the way things are and they continue this way, uh, centre will have no other alternative but to intervene because uh, section, Article 356 very clearly says if the state government cannot be run according to the constitution, then centre has to intervene. But as you said, I think it's a very shocking state of affairs where uh, uh, the rule of, of law is being challenged by mobs. Right. Uh, I think it's a care, carefully crafted strategy by the orchestrated. AI, AI, DMK, orchestrated. These are really psycho uh, to say that this is uh, uh, hero worshipping. I don't, I don't buy that uh, argument at all. Uh, it, it is uh, to pressurize the system to um, particularly the judiciary uh, that they should give bail to Jailalita. If you look at the history of all this, the case has been has been dragging on for years. 18 years. 18 years. I mean, it is, it is, it is ridiculous. If a serious allegation like corruption, uh, a, a case cannot be finished in a short time and drags on after 18 years, and then when conviction comes, if this happens, I think this augurs uh, very badly for democracy and rule of law in this country. I mean, I, you, have been a, you have been a governor and you have also been a very senior police officer holding very important posts. How does, now, first, how, how does the governor of Tamil Nadu react to this kind of situation? And how the, what, you know, here, is a, here is a situation where the ruling party itself is involved in, in orchestrating these kind of things. What, what are the options before the police also? I think the, um, there is no option at all. There is only one option to enforce the rule of law. And if anybody challenges the rule of law and the constitution of the country, then intervention and Article 356. And it's very strong action to nip the trouble in the bud because otherwise it has far-reaching consequences. If a mobocracy takes over in this country, today it is in Tamil Nadu, tomorrow it will be in some other state. I think um, it will be impossible to... Uh, we are a huge, diverse country and we can't allow this state of affairs to continue. Okay. Uh, Mohan, you know, two or three very interesting things. Yesterday, uh, I mean, as Mr. Marwa points out, the, the fact that the whole case dragged on for 18 years... Yeah. Everybody seems to be responsible for this, you know, the kind of uh, the prosecutors and everybody. But yesterday, when the, when this bail application was being heard in this in the in the high court, you know, this whole thing that that this the public prosecutor comes out and says that you know we are not opposing bail, you know, and then the media goes hyper and says that conditional bail has been granted, and later it, it you know we we find that the that the uh, judge has rejected that bail. How do you look at all these developments? Well, uh, the judge has noted in his judgment that the public prosecutor has put strong objections. But later, for some reasons, uh, he said, I have no objection to the grant of bail, uh, subject to the condition the court likes to impose. See, this creates a, some kind of a suspicion in the minds of public that as if the prosecution is hand in glove with the uh, accused. <laughs> uh, this kind of a, a, a and here here he was a, he was a, he was the public prosecutor in the case mm -hmm. which led to the conviction though Correct. he came much Correct. later. Yeah. 
And now he has been appointed as a special public prosecutor by the Tamil Nadu government also. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. They, that's fine. The they, public prosecutors often uh, get up and say in the court that there was no objection. It happens because after all, he is not only, uh, 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 he is the guardian of the public right who has to see that uh, things are to be balanced both sides. But in this case, having filed strong objections, later he doesn't explain what reasons. He just gets up and says, I have no objection to the grant of bail. This kind of a statement created uh, suspicion, creates a suspicion in the minds of public, uh, which doesn't augur well for the prosecution. We are now joined in by Dr. Subramaniam Swami. Dr. Subramaniam Swami is the, was the original uh, petitioner in the case which led to the conviction of uh, Jalalita. Dr. Swami, what we, we discussed this about a week back when the, when the uh, conviction happened and now that the bail has been rejected and you know what we are what we are talking and being concerned is about the kind of pressure tactics being employed all over Tamil Nadu buses of Karnataka being disturbed being you know uh, destroyed how do you see this pressure tactics and <clears throat> where where will it end and what is it that the, the Tamil Nadu government will have to do now why well, there's a breakdown of the constitutional machinery in uh, Tamil Nadu is that how you look at Absolutely. In my opinion, it's a fit case for three, Article 356 of the Constitution. We had, uh, in 1991, when Mr. Chandrasekhar was Prime Minister and I was his senior minister, we had dismissed the DMK government exactly. on very similar uh, reasons and it had a very salutary effect uh, uh, in the law and order administration. The LTT had to really go underground after that. Here, again, the ADMK has now been infiltrated by the remnants of the LTT, the Islamic Jihadis, and a whole lot of How people. How are you saying that? You know, this I have in this information on that, and uh, that's why I'm telling you, the ADMK party was never this kind of violent party. It had... Uh, uh, well, MGR created this party because he didn't like the, uh, the rude and rough uh, tactics of the DMK. And he broke off. He felt they were very corrupt and the public voted him in. The public has consistently voted against all the LTT people. Vaiko has never lost, won an no, election. But it's very, it's, it's very, it's very uh, you know, surprising that you're linking LTT with this, with what is happening today in Tamil Nadu. Absolutely. It, it seems to be just nothing but psychophancy at its, at its no, worst. No, 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 psychophancy can be generated because of the cinema thing. But they wouldn't have been violent like this. This violence, this you targeting of people, this throwing of stones, their death threats have been issued to various people. Uh, and these have been brought to the no knowledge of the police. And uh, there is also a uh, unholy hold of the husband of Ms. Sashikala uh, in the matter because there's a vacuum. And uh, the, most of the other people don't have the spine to stand up to him. And so okay. that is the problem. Okay, we are also joined in by V.S. Chandrasekhar, he is the executive editor of PTI and a long time watcher of, the, of Tamil Nadu's politics and everything which is happening in Tamil Nadu. Chandrasekhar, you know, would you agree with Mr. Dr. Swami that you know, this is not just the ADMK cadres but the infiltrators which are creating this problem or you think that this is simply psychophancy you know, going overboard? I would uh, agree with the second opinion more. I think the ADMK cadres and even the DMK cadres, they are given to, you know, uh, psychophantic reactions when something about their leadership is involved. And I think it is an overreaction. And probably once the case moves to the Supreme Court, I think things might quieten down, whichever way the verdict goes on the bail application. And, and I expect the case to go on and uh, go on for some more time. But you think, you know, don't you think that these are pressure tactics being employed? How do you expect that to that to come down? Because the same kind of pressure tactics were employed in Karnataka High Court, you know, before the bail application was taken up in Karnataka High Court. We didn't see uh, anything coming down, and after after the bail was rejected, it it has, it has only got worse. I agree with you that there is uh, you know lack of logic or uh, sensibility in uh, reactions. There is a certain historicity to the animosity between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, given the uh, issues relating to Kaveri and other uh, uh, disputes that are going on between the two states. But that does not make it that the judgment given by a court is also coloured by such disputes, because it's a 
uh, judgment given by a due process, uh, by a court constituted by the due process of law. So, but I think once the matter moves to the Supreme Court, then that uh, element will not be there. And I think some uh, sensibility will come back to the scene. What do you, uh, Chandru, what do you think of what uh, Dr. Swami says, even uh, Mr. Ved Marwa earlier was saying that, you know, if things continue like this, the center will have to intervene. Yeah, that, to, to some extent, yes, the, there is a responsibility for the centre to come down heavily on the state government to, I think, uh, read the right act to them that uh, things cannot go on like this. You should bring back the law and order situation. Uh, uh, may but I, there, yes, two, yes, two instances. One is then the curriculum uh, agitation. Right. In fact, I had the, was the first one to say that there, there are foreign elements who have infiltrated that thing and uh, all these activities are to somehow uh, stop the nuclear uh, plant from coming into operation. We lost valuable time, almost one and a half years on that. Later on, the Prime Minister himself went on record to say that these people are being uh, guided from abroad. Now, we recently, uh, uh, with the help of the Sri Lankan government, arrested a man called Selvarajan, who was trained by the ISI. And the controller was in Colombo. He had to be turned out now because of our improved relations with Sri Lanka. Now we are getting a lot of cooperation. I can say that in the last few years, there has been a steady infiltration of both uh, Islamic militants into Tamil Nadu as well as the LTT regrouping in association with them. That, that, I mean, that's very interesting that you're saying that. So far, we have not heard any such reports. You're the first one to be well, talking about this. Uh, and, and you're known to talk about the, you know, many things first time. Uh, Mr. Marwa? No, um, once disturbances start taking place, then all the forces in India or abroad, which are inimical to our country, will use the, exploit the opportunity to push their own agenda. But more than that, there's a second danger, I think, which we are not uh, um, considering. That is the anti-social <coughs> element. We have seen a history uh, when uh, the ruling party itself is encouraging lawlessness, then the uh, anti-social elements come in the way. <laughs> 1984 riots uh, in Delhi, right. there was a suspicion of that. And see where it landed us. And I think uh, the it, it, a very serious situation is developing. And uh, earlier, the uh, union government intervenes, irrespective of the political consequences, the better it would be for uh, uh, integrity and sovereignty of our country. Mohan, Mohan, the question is this, that, you know, uh, the bail has to be, this is, this is a very extraordinary case. Now, it, is, it has assumed some political color also because of the fact that it is, it is, the, the, yeah. the case happened in, uh, the case happened to uh, be in Karnataka and the Karnataka High Court judge did not succumb to the pressures and he has given his ruling. But, but you think that, you know, in this kind of a situation, uh, there, there are also demands that, you know, she should be shifted from, uh, from Karnataka. Why should she be allowed to remain in Karnataka prison? Because it's only causing more and more trouble there. Is, is it? How does the court react to these kind of situations? How should the court react to this kind of thing? Yeah, this all depends upon if the government has to take a policy decision and move uh, an application to the court. Government, if, which government has to do that? Well, the state Karnataka government has to do that. Karnataka, it's, it's the owner, the onus is now on the Karnataka because government? Karnataka government it's the host will, government. Host, host government. government mm. Because it is in uh, the, the warrant issued by the trial judge after conviction is to the jail authority in Karnataka right. to take her into custody. Now, they will have to consider moving an application, and it is a fit case, in fact, to move an application, that she should be shifted to some other jail, not uh, outside Karnataka, somewhere else in Delhi, or some other northern part of the country. <laughs> because this, the way things are happening uh, is that it is a direct challenge to the legal system, as Mr. Ved Mora rightly put it, Mr. Prabhupada Swami, that you are challenging the legal system, judicial system, and that cannot be permitted to go on. Uh, therefore, right. the, it is the appropriate case that the government moves an application and she be shifted out of the southern state to somewhere in the northern part and kept in the custody. Would, you, the, would, would you agree with that, Dr. Swami? Well, yes, uh, certainly not back to Tamil Nadu. <laughs> uh, it will be only making, uh, but uh, I think there are secure places. If nothing else, Andamans are always there. <laughs> Ch Chandrasekhar? 
you th you think that you know situation is coming to a stage where we you know the the, the Karnataka government will have to be forced to make this kind of an application and move her out of the state and or you, you know as you are saying that maybe after the supreme if it comes before the supreme court and the process starts here the things may uh, you know cool down there see it's uh, the decision has to be taken by the Karnataka government in its own wisdom I think the chief minister but the chief minister has said it is not in my uh, jurisdiction, it is for the courts to decide. And um, probably for some time there must be, there may be some uh, street protest, but I think it should settle down after some time. Once she gets bail, and uh, once she gets uh, bail, once she gets bail, <laughs> and, what, and I don't think. Bail. What, what if she doesn't get bail? That is where the problem <laughs> starts. No, I, I would say she may get bail because of the fact that uh, Supreme Court has given bail in cases like Lalu Prasad. The they are not comparable. Okay, so it may, they I may mean, not... I, I'll argue that, but it doesn't matter. You know, that is, anyway, I mean, what you think right now, it doesn't matter. Yeah. What will happen in the court is what matters. Yes. But that's what he thinks. Mr. Mr. Marwa? No, no, he, but he's saying about Lalu. Yeah, there's no comparison with Lalu. In fact, in the in the bail is in fact rejection uh, exactly. order itself, uh, he has mentioned why exactly. it is uh, it's not exactly. comparable. But, but, but I'll tell you, yes. here... The one thing that goes in her favour is that the SPP appointed by the Karnataka government himself went on record to say, I have no objection to the conditional that bail. That is exactly, that is, Dr. Swami, in fact, that is, that it's, that before you came, we were discussing that. How is it that a special public prosecutor goes out, goes out tells the media that I have no problem with the, and which, which led to all kinds of rumours and you know the wrong reporting also? Maybe, but the ultimate judge is the, the judge himself, you see. The fact is that in his case, the, the judge itself has noted Right. That you have changed your stand. In the morning you said that she can't be, she's very influential, she'll run away from the uh, abroad, she'll go abroad, all kinds of things he said. In the afternoon he said something else. Therefore, the issue is that all these things, uh, ultimately the judicial authority is the judge. And they, he has uh, given a very long reasoned argument. In fact, he has quoted my, one of my other uh, victories I got in the Supreme Court was in the Union, uh, Indian Bank case where the CBI was making a distinction between highly placed persons and uh, lowly placed persons okay. in matters of corruption. And uh, the court said, no, we are, when it comes to corruption, we are not making any distinction at all. And he has quoted that to uh, say that this applies to her too. Mr. Now, as far as the Lalu thing, let me add here. He was 10 months in jail under trial, right. two months, and his only argument was that the uh, Jharkhand uh, uh, court had given to 32 of the 44 uh, uh, prisoners already why he was being uh, discriminated against. It was on Article 14 issue that he was given bail. Right. Mr. Marwa, my question is this. When they have to... You think that this is a fit case, as Mohan, Mohan says, that to shift her from out to outside Karnataka? Because... Karnataka government and people there are saying that we have nothing to do with this case. We have, we have to suffer because of this, uh, because of what has happened. No, that will depend on the situation in. Uh, who, 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 is, who has the onus? To, is, it, is it the Karnataka government? Because Chandrasekhar says that the chief minister has said that the courts will have to take the decision. It is, it is the Karnataka government which has to decide first whether the law and order situation is such that keeping her in uh, Karnataka will further complicate the situation. Final decision is that of the court. But you see, the point here is, which we are discussing, that an impression amongst the public that judiciary can be arm-twisted right. or the whole criminal justice system can be arm-twisted can have very serious consequences. Because, uh, and I think the, here, the uh, courts will have to very seriously weigh, weigh, weigh the tactics which are being employed uh, by the... Uh, um, Anna DMK and Jay Lalitha to browbeat the uh, prosecution. And the manner in which the prosecutor has uh, behaved only shows that he has been arm twisted. And this will be, this Whether is a he very was arm twisted or he gladly did it. With, I mean, uh, from, from what the judgment says, that you know, his, the way he changed his stand from morning to afternoon. These are all matters of serious concern. That, that the judge has ignored that change of stand. He ah. said that since objections are filed, I am going by the objections which are on the record. Okay. So he he makes it very clear that the prosecutor did not give the reasons why he had changed his stand. Okay. okay. That's yeah. how the whole thing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Chandrasekhar, the other question, you know, yesterday the media, for, you know, looked very looked very 
you know, <laughs> presented itself in a terrible situation. There, there was this, I don't know whether, uh, I don't know whether, I have not, I didn't notice whether PTI reported that she was given conditional bail, but I many, can, but many, but I many of the newspapers, their TV. websites, television channels yeah. went to town <laughs> saying that she got conditional bail. You know, don't you, as a very senior journalist, you have been, you know, reporting for decades now. Don't you think that this is something, where did you, where do you, where do you think it went wrong? Yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, I can put it on record that PTA, pro I can proudly say that PTA did not file that wrong story. Right. Because we waited for our man on the ground to come out and say what happened. So right. they didn't go by the atmosphere that prevailed outside or some uh, lawyers showing victory signs <laughs> or the word came out that conditional, uh, the SPP didn't oppose uh, uh, the, uh, the conditional bail. On that basis, I think uh, rumors spread and uh, 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 journalists fell prey to it and that is where I think some experience is called for to deal with such situation as to go by what happens in the court and not what goes around it. <laughs> around it. But, uh, but it, it, did, it did quite a bit of damage to... I mean, obviously, it has damaged the reputation of many, many yes. media organizations yes. because of this. Dr. Subramanian Swami, why do you think, how do you think this can be controlled at all? You see, well, because, first you know, of all, one, of, one of the reasons, one of the reasons which the reporters on the ground were saying yesterday was because the special public prosecutor came out and said that, you know, I don't have, I, I don't oppose any, I am not opposing any conditional bill. No, you see, the, uh, the, the fact of the matter is that there is today competitive, uh, uh, behavior amongst the medias to be the first one to say something. And in fact, I was under heavy pressure of 20 cameras at my residence asking my reaction to conditional bail. <laughs> Fortunately, I said, until I know what the conditions are, I'm not going to comment. And very soon this came. The important point is, you see, today, what Mr. Marwa said, any decision which goes in our favor would be viewed in the general public as a uh, outcome of this dadagiri that has taken place. Now, therefore, it's a question that today we are, the government has to put it down very firmly. We have to say when it comes to the judicial process, we will not allow this kind of um, mass uh, um, hysteria to decide anything or even influence anything or even scare something. There are people who are saying that the public prosecutor was afraid of his life if he had opposed it, and that's why he did this. I'm not saying that's what he did, why he did it, but th this is the rumor I heard in, in Karnataka. Second, if you, if you target uh, Karnatikas and Tamil Nadu, the, there are ch Chalu Valligars and all those in Karnataka who will target the Tamils. Tamils are uh, almost 30% of, 35% uh, of Bangalore. Now, where will all this go? This is exactly what foreign uh, elements hostile to India want. Mr. Marwa, would you believe that? No, no, I entirely endorse uh, Mr. Swami's uh, view because this is a very explosive situation. On the one hand, the law and order machinery is being seriously challenged. And the secondly, that uh, here an impression is being uh, conveyed to an ordinary citizen that, you see, every citizen is equal before the law. But when people with money power or muscle power or political power um, can be shown to be above the law, then the whole system breaks down. Okay, Mr. Marwa, you know, since you have been a governor and you understand that what happened in that situation, what, what are, is there any option before the Tamil Nadu governor now to do anything? Well, Tamil Nadu government, depending on which Tamil Nadu government. The governor, the, I'm talking of the governor. The president, the governor can, governor means the president's rule. Right. Yes. If the president's rule is imposed, then he must act again, very firmly put down uh, all these uh, challenges, uh, challenge to the law and order, and uh, uh, take action wherever it is required under the law. And only that will convey the right message. If I, can, if I can add, really the person who should step in at this moment is the Home Minister of India. Right. Uh, he okay. must step in and you must uh, uh, tell the uh, security report from the governor or the center can act so moto, issue a directions to both the state governments uh, to how to go about in the matter. Okay, that's interesting. Chandru, very quickly, last words to you. Yeah. How do you think the now? How do you think the politics? The present chief minister, you think he'll be able to handle this situation? How do you, how do you look at this? See, as uh, Mr. Marwa and the other uh, panelists were saying, these are all constitutional possibilities. But politically speaking, given the goodwill that exists between AADMK and BJP, I don't expect any strong actions 
from the center against the state government, except that, as they say, the Home Minister can talk to the Chief Minister and uh, read, the, read out the right act to him that say that they have said the th things in order. Okay. I think on that note, we need to end. There, now, the, the ball, according to all my panelists here, is in the, in the court of the center and hopefully the Home Minister will take note of this situation and act accordingly. But what, whatever is happening in Tamil Nadu is a matter of very, very serious concern as all my panelists say. It, if, if it goes out of hand, it can lead to a lot of disastrous consequences. Hopefully it will not happen. Thanks to all my guests, Dr. Subraman Swami, Ved Marwa, Mohan Katharki and Chandrasekhar. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue, the big picture, same time tomorrow.